Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. I had a couple of dreams this morning um, I wanted to share because uh, they were related. They were very um, strange little dreams. I, I didn't understand them at first, but um, and whether I fully understand them at this moment, I'm not sure, but they were rather kind of interesting. They were about the same thing. And it was about driving um, and stumbling blocks. Interesting. Uh, the first dream was I was in a car with a, a group of people. There were a couple people in the back of this car. A young man was driving the car and I was in the passenger seat in the front. And uh, as we were going down the road, this young man was a new driver. Uh, he still, you know, he had his learners, I guess, his whatever, but I was trying to coach him through his driving. He was doing a good job until he came to a curve in the road. And um, he kind of ignored the curve and was tempted to go over the curve. And I corrected him in his driving um, so that it didn't damage the car because everyone in the back was panicking that he was going to hit this, this curve. So he, cause he was unaware that there was a, there was a, a curve and he was going to drive right over it. So I showed him he needed to go around the curve properly or he's going to damage the car. So then we were going to, we had to park the car, but we had to go around the block that meant going, making a right hand turn onto certain blocks. So as we were driving around the, the block, he stopped his car to check to see if there was oncoming traffic to make a right turn, you know, to he had turn left to make sure there was no oncoming traffic. And then he started to, to take off without sh turning back in the direction he was going. And when he, when I had to stop him because I said, stop, <laughs> Wait, there's, there's, there's people in front of you. You can't just start your car and keep going without even first check, you know, looking back in the direction you're going before you move your car. You have to make sure you, you there's nobody in front of you. There could, there could have been pedest pedestrians in front of you. And in this case, there was, there was people crossing in front of the car and he it didn't even seem to really care. He just seemed to be like so determined to do. He started plowing through these people, not knocking them over, but basically just moving his car in an unconcerned fashion. Uh, it, like he was, you know, get out of my way sort of thing. And I had to rebuke him. When we stopped the car and parked it, I took him aside and I, re I rebuked him for not being careful. I said, you have to always make, you know, after you've show, you know, you've done your left check, you've got to, before you move your car, you must turn and look right to make sure that there's nobody in front of you. You could hurt somebody. And he was very offended. He felt offended. And I pulled him aside and I said, it's not because you're not a good driver. It's because we have to be careful about who we're going to hurt. You know, we're not alone on this road. We have to we have to be careful about, you know, which direction we're going so that we're not going to hurt anybody. And then the second dream, that was the first dream, and the second dream was rather similar in a way, but I was in the driver's seat this time. And I was like, I was telling myself basically the same thing. I had stopped at a uh, stop sign. And, and I was going to make a right turn and I first made my left hand check and then I turned to the right to make sure and I was telling, coaching myself through the thing, whole thing. I must turn to it's in the direction I'm going, make sure there's nobody in front of me that I'm going to hurt. I have to make sure that I'm not going to hurt anybody. So it was the end of the, and that was the end of that dream basically. So anyway, the, the uh, verses that I got were um, first of all, First John two nine, he that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother, is in the darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. And that kind of pertained to the first dream that I had, and that this young man was un, unmindful of humanity. He, he had a direction he wanted to go to. He was in this vehicle and he lost his humanity. He didn't have a sense of his humanity because he was careless about the lives he was endangering. He had a journey he was on and he was, um, he, he didn't, he lacked compassion or understanding for those who were around him, who were more vulnerable than he was. And he was also, <clears throat> careless of the stumbling blocks. These were stumbling blocks. The curve in the road was a stumbling block. And those stumbling blocks are things that will hinder your journey. 
And not only do you have to be careful of what oncoming traffic, because you don't want to be in an accident, that could stop your journey too. But the stumbling blocks that damage the car that you're in, the, the car that we're in is, is our righteousness in Jesus Christ, our journey in the Lord. And this is keeping us safe, but we have to be careful of the stumbling blocks that Satan puts in our ways, the curves in the roads, if you will. Those things that cause bitterness and anger and, and um, resentment and, and uh, that, that keep us slowed down in our journey and will damage the vehicle that we're in. Um, this is what he says in Revelations 2.14 to the church in Pergamos. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there, uh, there are them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So these things are um, put there by Satan. You know, the, the, um, the temptation to, um, to fall into idolatry, uh, the temptation to uh, fall back into the world system of carelessness towards others, fornications, adulteries, strife, murder, envy, bitterness. These are all stumbling blocks that the Lord puts in, I mean, the Lord, excuse me, the devil puts in our way to hinder our journey or even just completely stop it. You know, and some, and I think the, the second dream was to, to say that we have to, we have to be the ones who are uh, responsible for our journey. We're the ones responsible for our journey on this road. We have to keep coaching ourselves. We must keep being reminded by the scriptures through prayer, through a meditation that, that there are, there's an enemy out there. There are, that he is putting things in our way and we have to be careful and always be reminding ourselves to stay in our vehicle, basically, to, to stay on our journey, to keep focus. Our journey is what's in front of us, but we must also keep our, an eye on what's around us because there are enemies, there are people who are trying to uh, stop us, there are people who are throwing false doctrine at us, and it's our responsibility to know the rules of, of the road. Uh, I remember I, when I was a young girl, I took young driver's ed education, you know, um, and they basically taught you road safety. Basically, they kept one of the major things they tell you is keep an eye on your mirrors. All your mirrors, look in the back. You're not just going forward. Look to the side, who's beside you, who's behind you, who's in front of you. And this will keep you safe on the road because while you're watching the road and where you're going, but you're keeping an eye on what's around you. Those people who could be, who are not as good a driver as you, uh, who've got dangerous, you know, like you're passing a big truck that you know isn't great to be driving beside, get around it or stay well behind it. They're teaching you safety. And it's the same thing in my dream when I was talking to this young man. Those people who are less experienced don't know that there are, there, Satan is a real enemy and he will throw um, trouble in your way in order to hinder your journey in the Lord. Um, really quickly, I'm going to tell you a brief story that happened to me. This kind of relates to uh, what I was just telling you here um, and how Satan is a real enemy and how he will try to throw roadblocks at us. And this is actually related to this, the same dreams. This is kind of strange. This happened a few years ago. Um, I was in my uh, uh, vehicle, my company car, and I was making a left turn, but there was a car in front of me. I was making a left turn, and the car in front of me was, of course, making a left turn to get onto the certain road. And as this, I was behind this car, this guy seemed to be stalling his car. And I was thinking to myself, because I was right behind him, I was trying to get on my lane, and, and this man was stalling his car. And I'm thinking, okay, he's driving kind of strange. I thought at the time it was a rather strange that he wasn't driving particularly well. So what I did was I scooted around him and took the right-hand lane beside him and went past him. Well, this guy seemed to be fine after a moment and started to drive beside me. So we were in two lanes heading down the road. And this man beside me kept up with the same pace I was going. Um, now the road, the, the, the lane I was in makes a right, made a right-hand turn. In fact, it was a, an off-ramp road. 
to go into the city. And the road that the lane that the man beside me was in was a le- was going on to a bridge. So I stayed in my lane because I wanted to go into the city. I didn't want to go on the bridge. So this man in beside me gets up in front of me and gets in front of me so that he's also going into the road, into the city. So he pulls up and he, we come to the, the place where, okay, the road now is in front of us this way. Um, and we have to go on to the road that goes into the city. So we have to make this right hand merge into, into this, the city road. Okay. But so we are on it. We're at a yield and we have to stop. And the guy in front of me does his left hand shoulder check. There's no traffic. Now this is really unusual rush hour, no traffic on this road at all. So there's no oncoming traffic. So he starts to move off. And my assumption was this man is okay, gone. So I'm behind him, make my left hand shoulder check. Now I start to move my car without first checking to the right. I'm looking, I'm making my left hand shoulder check. I'm moving my car forward and make with the assumption that this man had taken and gone off. I should have learned from the, the first incident, but I didn't. And I start to move forward out without first shoulder checking or looking in the direction I'm going. And I turn my head. I couldn't be going very fast by this point because we had, I had come to a full stop. So I think I was spending about between 20, 25 miles per hour. It wasn't very fast. It was just enough to start getting going. No traffic. I turn to look in the direction I'm going and lo and behold, there's the man sitting right in front of me. No time to stop. No time to go around. I hit him, smashed into him. Now I wasn't going very fast, but I was going fast enough to make his car jump at least three or four feet. He had come to a dead stop and I hit him. I felt my car crunch at the front. I just, I felt it, accordion. So I'm sitting there going, what just happened? I I just hit this man. Obviously I knew right away it was my fault because he had stopped and I hit him. So I, I'm thinking, okay, I'm not hurt. Mm, I wonder what happened. So I got out of my car, go to the front of his car first to see if there's anybody else in the car with him. And I, and, and I go to up to his car window and I said, are you okay? Is anybody else in the car with you? What happened? Why did you stop? <laughs> and that was what was going through my mind. Why did you stop? This is the first accident I've, I've, I've been in that I've caused. Can I, you know, what do we do? Do I have, I have my driver's license? I think we should, I'm getting all this stuff out. You know, I'm trying to communicate with this man. And this man gets out of his car, cool as a cucumber, never says a word, goes to the back of my car, the back of his car to where the impact was and looks at his car. And then he looks at my car and then he looks at his car and then he looks at my car and he touches his car and he touches my car. And he knows, it never says a word to me. And in the meantime, I'm still chatting away. Uh, I should get my driver's license. What's your name? You should exchange information. I know it was my fault. Why did you stop? <laughs> this goes on for at least a couple of minutes. And then he gets up and he says, uh, no, uh, I'm late. I got to go. So he gets in his car and he drives off. Now, (laughs) I'm thinking, what just happened? I don't understand what happened. And then all of a sudden it came to me. This man was putting a roadblock in my way. He was deliberately trying to cause an accident. I was his victim. And actually, he was gunning for an accident. But what made him go off, what had made him drive off, there wasn't a scratch on his car, and there wasn't a scratch on mine. No evidence of damage at all. Now, that was God's protection. He protected me from this evil stumbling block that Satan had put in my way to hinder me on my journey, whatever that Satan's, I know this man was being used by Satan. He obviously was to put a roadblock in my way. Now I would have avoided that accident altogether. If I had first looked in the direction in which I was going. So this, uh, this was all an illustration to tell you or to, to show you that Satan is real. 
He wants to put roadblocks in the way. What could have caused me? It could have lost, I could have lost my job. I don't think I would have, but I, I could have lost my job. Um, it could have made me a nervous Nelly to be on the road. It would, could have caused fear. It could have caused, caused anxiety. And this is what Satan does. He wants to put roadblocks in our way in order to hinder us emotionally and spiritually to hinder our journey. Okay? But we also have to be reminded of the humanity. We also have to keep our humanity while we're on this journey to, to love our brother on the journey. To st like the Good Samaritan stopped on his journey to help somebody else. To be aware of others around us. To be aware that we're not alone, even though we're, it seems we're in this impenetrable vehicle. There's others outside our vehicle who are vulnerable. And we don't want to plow them over <laughs> with, with the truth. We want to, to be careful and cautious of others, but also we want to be not hindered by Satan on our journey. So I think that's pretty much all I want to say on this. Um, God bless you, and I will talk to you later.